everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Cassandra. I have a PhD in vineyard and wine science and on this channel I talk about what it's like to live and work in wine country. It's Sunday Mother's Day and I want to say happy Mother's Day to the moms who are watching right now and I also want to give a special happy Mother's Day to my own mom. She is 2,000 miles away and my career has taken me all over the place and has taken me away from my family but my mom has been there for me every step of the way through every move and change in life and I really wish we could be together today. I'm going to be doing a little gardening because it's already been intolerably hot here in Napa. On Friday it was 99 degrees, yesterday was 91 degrees. Uh, today is much cooler and you can probably hear the breeze in the trees and the birds singing. It's a, a lovely day and I'm on my patio having a little tea time, some decaf Earl Grey tea and I'm about to plant some plants and my garden is kind of non-traditional because I live in an apartment so I have mainly potted plants over my shoulder you can see some succulents and then in the shade of my umbrella above I have some herbs that are germinating and um, I have some other potted herbs and vegetables and I'm going to be doing some transplanting today and getting my tomatoes going. So I wish she and I could be together for this. In addition, um, this shirt is on theme today because I am doing a rosé all day for Mother's Day. So I'm going to be talking about some rosé wine purchases that I made recently and um, basically pretend my mom is here and toast her with some lunch and rosé wine but I'm so excited to um, present some information about rosé wine because it's getting warm outside and it's the perfect time to have a crisp chilled glass of rosé wine and I also did a wine repurchase and I'll show you what that is speaking of getting warm outside it is a barbecue friendly wine in my opinion so I will post uh, the timestamp below for the wine if you just care about the wine and a timestamp as well for the cooking portion but I'm going to garden with you a little bit so again happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there especially my own mom and uh, I hope you enjoy this video here are some of my germinating herbs. This is purple basil, and I have regular basil and Thai basil. And I did end up repurposing this candle uh, holder, and I planted lemongrass. Look at that cute, adorable little lemongrass coming up. And um, this is this is dill, and I planted some French thyme and some sage, which have not germinated yet. And this pot is vacant and I have a uh, German thyme. I think that's what I'm going to plant in here. Here's my garden. So my succulents and cactus, they're doing quite well. And my um, oregano is growing like crazy. I have a couple tomato plants growing. I've got one here that actually has some flower buds in it already. Some carrots and radishes. My mint also going crazy. This one has some potatoes planted and another tomato plant. Hiding back here are uh, some lettuces and I'm going to be planting this parsley. Um, so I'm replanting this parsley and then I have a, another curly parsley and a flat leaf parsley in here. Um, a couple tomato plants and a lavender plant that will go in this flower pot here.
Let's Talk Wines. I had to move myself because the sun is um, on the other side of the table and I want to be cool and in the shade. And I should mention all these wines that I'm going to be showing you are from Grocery Outlet. Your local grocery outlet may not carry these, but check, check it out the next time that you're in and see if you can find them. Uh, so first I'm gonna start off with my repurchase, which I seldom do because there's so much wine out there to try, but this one is a great value for what it tastes like. I think actually if you took it to people's houses, they would be very surprised by how much it costs. Um, because it's definitely have has a lot of flavor and I showed it in a recent video and it is the El Primero Graciano Garnacha from Novara, Spain and this is the 2018 vintage. I will post a link below and in the upper corner uh, to the original video where I spoke about this wine, but just to review, it's 85% Graciano, 15% Garnacha, which is the same thing as Grenache, and um, I like this because it had some spices to it, like baking spices, um, things like cloves and cinnamon, and then it had um, dark bluey purple fruit notes like plums and blueberry, and it had um, kind of a balanced tannin so not too grippy and grabby like in a young Cabernet Sauvignon for example if you've ever felt that uncomfortable sort of grip and grab those are the tannins uh, grabbing onto your palate and this one um, had very comfortable tannins and then it had a nice acidity um, so I had this um, with a Spanish chicken recipe. It's Nigella Lawson Spanish chicken and I'll post a link to that below but Honestly, I think this is going to be an awesome barbecue wine uh, because barbecue sauce, it's fruity, spicy sometimes, um, and has some acidity. So you need to have a wine that can counterbalance that. And also barbecue sauce is often sweet. And because this has a nice fruitiness, I feel like um, it's going to have a cohesive flavor throughout the meal and tasting the wine. So um, comment below if you'd like to know some more barbecue friendly wines because um, now my palate is changing for the season. Not so many big Merlots and Cabs. I'm thinking whites, rosés, and barbecue friendly wines. And then rosé one. Rosé 2, Rosé 3. So, um, yeah, I have a few of these to review. I'm not going to open all of them today, but I am going to make some lunch and have a glass of wine uh, with my lunch. And um, so I was attracted to these because one of them, it's kind of unusual. This is a Sangiovese Rosé. And when you think of Sangiovese, it's kind of a, a cool grape because it can be fruity and um, kind of a fun fruity red wine. But it can also be very bold, like in a Chianti. So I, I like the grape for its uh, very diverse expression. And um, a lot of uh, Pinot Noir drinkers I know are very like tried and true ride or die Pinot Noir drinkers, but I feel like if you get that fruity, um, lighter expression of a Sangiovese, that's a great option to branch out from the Pinots. And this is Fletcher Louis um, Sangiovese Rosato from Mendocino County, and it's 13.5% alcohol, and it's from organically grown grapes. I've never been to this uh, winery, but I would really like to visit it the next time I'm up there. And um, it, I've looked at previous vintages, and it looks like they also blend a small proportion of Petite Syrah and Cabernet Sauvignon. And I didn't get um, any specs in terms of percentages here. Sorry, the wind is shaking my camera. Um, I didn't get any um, proportions on this one but um, I think it's a fair assumption that there could be a little bit of those varietals in this. And then I was super excited about this. I have two rosés from Austria, so I've been trying to branch out quite a lot, and both of them are of the varietal Zweigelt, 
and um, I don't speak German, so I'm going to do my best, but they are both from a region in Austria called um, Niederostlich, and that means um, Lower Austria, and it's in the northeastern corner of the country. So, um, first of all, I have, this is chilled a little bit, so this is my lunch choice, and this is um, from Prach, and it's a wine by Stephen Prach, and uh, it's a 2018 rosé, and I like how both of them comment on the back about um, the viticulture, the grape growing science. So this has 11.5% alcohol, and it says it's a dry rosé, so for 11.5% alcohol, usually I would think, oh, there's a bit of sugar uh, because alcohol is a byproduct of sugar fermentation. If you have a lower alcohol, you probably have more sugar in your wine, or it came from a cool climate and it didn't accumulate too much sugar during the ripening, so there's not a lot of sugar to start with during your fermentation. Since this is in northeastern Austria, I would suspect that they have a very short growing season, so the grapes just didn't accumulate a ton of sugar to begin with. So, um, can't wait to try this one. Um, oh, tasting notes on this one, fragrant and lemon scented and strawberry kissed with a touch of spritz. So that's gonna be fun. And then I saw two pronunciations for this one, Huber and Hubert, Huber, Huber. Um, I'm not sure the correct way to pronounce this, Huber or Uba. You can tell me below. Uh, <laughs> but um, same appellation as the previous one, same varietal and uh, also 11.5% alcohol, and this is a 2016. So a much, um, it's two years older than the Prach. So um, that being said, um, oh, I forgot to tell you the prices of all these. So the El Primero Graciano Garnacha is $5.99, as previously stated. The Prach was $3.99. Um, the Louis Sangiovese was $5.99 and the um, Uba was $4.99. So that being said, let's go to the kitchen and make some lunch. So the lunch I wish I could make for my mom uh, today is some fish. This is wild caught rock fish fillets. And um, when I was in college, I had a Brazilian recipe where the last minute of cooking fish, um, you put fresh tomato and scallion on top and lime juice, but I'm using lemon, which I think will be nice with the wine because um, it supposedly has a lemony touch to it. And then the fruitiness of the wine, I think will go well with the tomatoes. And then I have some fresh oregano from my garden and I'm going to season the fish with classic Old Bay seasoning. So let's get cooking. Here's lunch all prepared. I have the fish with the tomatoes, lemons, scallions, and fresh oregano, some steamed Yukon gold and red skin potatoes, and some steamed broccoli. And I just wish my mom could be having this meal with me. And I haven't opened this yet. So I'm going to be opening it with you. And this is a screw cap.
Wow, I just got this burst of aroma. It's very fruity. And um, usually for new wine drinkers, it's not complicated. You just swirl, sniff, and sip. Swirl, sniff. Wow, it's like a fresh cut strawberry. Wow. It is a dry rosé. Light and fresh and fruity, um, elegant. And I know uh, qualitative words are very confusing for wine, but it's like biting into a strawberry. And you get a little tickle from the slight effervescence. Wow. Um, it's, it's like a, a little bit of lemon zest quality to it. I think it's going to pair well with the fruity cherry tomatoes. And then I also used lemon on the fish as well. And um, with the fish, I have some steamed broccoli and steamed um, red and Yukon gold potatoes. And I, I really wish my mom could join me for this meal because I feel like she would like it. Um, this is a great wine to have at the beginning of the meal because I don't know if it's because the food is appetizing, but um, it's very, it creates like a very mouth-watering sensation because it has a nice bright acidity. So um, if you were going to have people over for a barbecue, for example, you could greet them at the door with this wine. It would get their appetite ready. Um, this would probably be pretty fantastic with some blue cheese um, or even something like an Asiago or some other um, aged cheese like that. You could do just shards of Asiago or Parmesan or, or something of that nature and pass that around with the wine, get everybody's appetite going, and then serve the barbecue food. Uh, maybe even some barbecue uh, with that, maybe even with that Graciano Garnacha for the main course red wine. Uh, but very impressed by this. Fantastic price point. Uh, I think this was the $3.99 or $4.99. I would definitely expect this to cost more. Um, absolutely fantastic. So that being said, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe. And cheers from wine country.